Hello, everybody. It's uh, Thursday afternoon, 4.10 p.m. Going to do another test drive for FSD 12.5, leaving from uh, South Kissimmee, where I live, to head up towards the Kissimmee Municipal Airport. So it's 10 miles. GPS says about 19 minutes, so I'll go ahead and activate now. And the message says, uh, attention monitoring not available because of sunglasses. Well, that's true. I'm wearing sunglasses because it's 4 o'clock in Florida. So we'll see what this does with respect to the nags. And even though I had to fail this morning with the camera or the system not recognizing a barricade it was going to run into, overall the smoothness of the ride and assertiveness seems close to hitting the sweet spot. It's more assertive than previous versions but not in a scary sort of way. And I have the system configuration set to average assertiveness right now. So there will be a security gate to go out of, though sometimes the gates open because of other traffic, which reduces the workload of the car. So we'll have to see how that works out. Okay, there's the first nag. Which I answered by adjusting the left roller wheel. So I have extra dark window tinting on the car, so I'll try to go without the sunglasses just to avoid the nags. Someone in the comments pointed out that this little green dot means that it's using eyeball monitoring and it just reappeared and my garage door opener reminded me that I forgot to close the garage when I left the house so I will do that remotely so I got another nag since it noticed I had a phone in my hand so we're slowing down either for the speed bump or the gate. You can choose. It does show a little ghost of a gate on the screen. So it did at least see the gate. It didn't slow down for those speed bumps. Garage door is closed. So that's good. It did not hesitate for the red light after it had come to a complete stop. It saw the wave was clear and it just went ahead and went. It used to creep a little bit and then go. But in the absence of traffic, creep was not necessary this time. So I'm again recording with the Insta360 X4 camera in the 8K 30 frame per second mode. Unless there's something particular that I want you to see, I'm going to leave this in a fairly wide angle so you can see out the side window just to have a better idea of situational awareness. And I'll go ahead and open up the visualization screen too, just to make it a little bit easier to see what the FSD software is looking at. So we're braking for some reason here at a green light. And then it's sped up. I don't have a good explanation for that. So I was thinking about moving around the uh, pickup truck, but the 
pickup truck got out of the way, so it just stayed in the lane and canceled that lane change. It would have made the lane change, but it had to hesitate because there was a car passing us at the time. You might have noticed the red line on the left side of the screen. If you not spend much time in Florida, this is the time of year, starting about May or June, when you can generally count on a couple of hours of thunderstorms pretty much every afternoon until sometime in October. They can be pretty intense. They don't last long. They don't hit 100% of the areas, but it's just sort of a built-in. <clears throat> the tricky thing in a tourist area like Orlando, where you may have people not used to traffic in general, and even foreigners not used to uh, driving in American traffic, and when the rain really starts coming down, some people just freeze up and will stop right in the middle of the road. So you have to be extra careful of unfamiliar drivers when the weather gets bad here. The next intersections are pretty big one where Pleasant Hill becomes Hoagland Road. So that's both a right turn lane and a left turn lane and two lanes that cross the intersection. Our plan is to go across the intersection of this route. The camera lens is mounted just below my eye level. And it's mounted a little bit to the left of the center line between the seat and the center console on top of a selfie stick. Actually, the two right turn lanes, as you can see here. And we'll be crossing South Orange Blossom Trail, which farther up the road becomes John Young Parkway, named after the astronaut and initial test pilot for the original space shuttle. Lots of things in Central Florida get named after astronauts. We're only 40 miles from the Kennedy Space Center. And there have always been defense contractors and space contractors based in the Central Florida area. They say the FAA is going to lift the suspension of SpaceX Falcon 9 flights, perhaps as early as tomorrow. I haven't checked the launch schedule, but there's quite a backlog of Falcon 9 launches that were put on hold after the last stage two failure. So the schedule says two Falcon 9 launches scheduled for July 27. But it says to be confirmed, so it's not been lifted yet, the suspension. This one occurs about midnight, Sunday morning. So far, the drive is pretty uneventful other than that unnecessary slowdown at one of the first traffic lights we came to. Two more miles to go. The Kissimmee Airport is a private airport with no airline service, though there are charter flights and jets. They have a 5,000 and a 6,000 foot runway does have a control tower and instrument approaches and a lot of planes based on the field including a fair number of uh, warbirds a couple of p-51s some t-6 texans various others 
It's the closest airport to the Disney parks. Which keeps things pretty busy. There's several flight schools and two major FBOs. An avionics shop and another aircraft maintenance facility. Cirrus also has a facility here. It's open within the last year. On this particular trip, we're running over to the maintenance facility, Spectrum Aero Maintenance. And here we are. So see you next time. I'll go ahead and terminate here.